episode 14. Welcome to the Fatherhood Fitness Finance Podcast, your training resource for being a happy, healthy, and wealthy dad. Hey, everybody. This is Seth. Today we have Ian Weinberg on the show. He's Seattle's premier fat loss and weight loss expert. He's been on CNN, ABC, a bunch of news networks. He's been the special guest at several national business conferences, and he's a busy father. Today, Ian is going to talk to us about the three keys of fat loss, why most diets suck, why we fail, how to bust plateaus, and the kind of mindset we need to achieve fitness success. I'm also going to ask him about why he hits treadmills with sledgehammers, and we're also going to talk about some bonus really material about some personal development and what he's been doing lately to develop his own personal skills. Well, I think I've talked enough. Let's hear from Ian. Hey, Ian. Thanks for being on. Thank you, Seth. I'm excited to be here. That's great, man. I've really been wanting to have a fat loss expert on the show because that's that's not me. I'm not, I'm not the expert in that. And so I'm really glad you're here. And you've got ianfitness.com. And you've got Ian Fitness, which is, it looks like nine locations in Seattle. So what exactly is, what are you doing at these nine gyms and what is Ian Fitness? Yeah, great question. So um, we, we like to refer to them as studios. They are personal training and boot camp studios. And so what we do is we take people who are looking to lose weight, uh, burn fat, and, and ultimately build some muscle and improve their overall fitness and we help them we help them accomplish that a lot faster than they would on their own. Um, you know, I think just about everybody's convinced themselves at one point or another that they can do it on their own and it usually yeah. just unfortunately doesn't necessarily work whether you know they have a hard time with the accountability or they have a hard time staying motivated or maybe they pick up an injury. So what we do is we provide, you know, a community and a culture for them to come in and get the results that they've, you know, ultimately been looking for for a while usually. For me personally, I was always kind of the cheap guy that never wanted to to pay for much, I would say. But now that I've been starting um, and running a small business, I've learned that paying for, you know, in this case, training and education is really kind of like the fast track. And so it's really kind of paying for that time and get your results faster. So I've I've definitely seen that. And I could I could imagine that that's why guys and, and women come to you and keep coming back. For sure, yeah. And, and what's that saying? It's like if you think a professional is expensive, try paying an amateur or something, or something along those lines, right? <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, it's like you know, at the end of the day, you get what you pay for, and um, and what what folks are generally paying for, like I mentioned, are are the results at the end of the day. Um, and it's you know, it's one of those things. It's hard to put really put a price. You know, like health is is the ultimate wealth, right? It's kind of all we got. And then when you're healthier, you're happier, and it really just kind of um, you know integrates into the, all the other facets of your life. I think. What about so you're in the Seattle area for people that aren't in Seattle what what could they look at or what guides do you have maybe can help them Yeah so I actually have have posted quite a few follow along workout videos on YouTube um and and then we do some you know online coaching for folks as well where it's obviously it's a little bit different of an experience where we're we're kind of providing them the workouts that they're going to need to do on their own versus when they're locally here in Seattle or the greater Seattle um, community, they can come into one of our locations and we'll walk them through it. But, you know, it's, I, I, when, when it comes to weight loss and fat loss, I think there's three really important components. Um, the first one is to make sure that the type of training you're doing, uh, is, is really at the level of intensity that's going to allow you to, you know, burn fat, burn calories and adjust your metabolism. The second, the second part of that is making sure you're eating in alignment with what your goals are. Right? You can't out train a bad diet. Right. Doesn't matter how how hard you're working out. If you know if your replacement meal is at Krispy Kreme instead of uh, you know the some healthy options, it's it's going to be a long road. And then that last pillar, um, and, and this is something that I've learned more recently, is is the mindset. You know, you can. You can work out real hard and you can, you know, eat right and, and get closer and closer to your goals. But if you haven't also made some progress with your mindset, then what's going to end up happening is you're going to probably make the same mistakes or fall back into those same patterns that led you to be um, out of shape in the first place. So those are the three big components that, that I really like to highlight to make sure people are, are have those boxes checked. Right. So that was intensity, diet, 
and mindset. Those were the three, correct? Absolutely. And I will, I will, I will refer to it as nutrition versus diet as well, because, well, you know, just the word diet in itself kind of has this um, insinuation that it's a short term thing. Right. And if we want to be healthy, permanent and make permanent changes, it needs to be a lifestyle adjustment. And so it's nutrition is, is just kind of that word. And, and for me, words have meaning. Right. So, you know, we'll use the word nutrition. How are you eating versus, hey, try this new diet, because then it's like, OK, I'll try this diet for a while, but then I'll go back to my normal way of eating. Whereas like, hey, here's how you should eat. Uh, in terms of, you know, what your goals are, and it, and it should be a permanent way. Yeah, and, and talking about diet, and I saw this on your on your website, and I'll go ahead and ask you, so why do 90% of diets suck? Yeah, um, usually folks are hungry, uh, it's yeah. too complicated, and the food doesn't taste good. So those are usually the three reasons. And, you know, and how can you, how could you, um, you know, blame somebody for not sticking with something if those are, if that's the case? So I like to help people find food that they enjoy eating and, and that's also good for them. And, and when you can, when you can find those two options, you can usually eat as much of it as you want because, you know, nobody ever got fat or, or overweight by eating too much salad or eating too many, too much chicken breast with, you know, side of broccoli and something else and a sweet potato, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So it's, it's finding things that they like and, and that's really the key because then it becomes sustainable. Whereas, like I mentioned, you know, you can you can eat any certain way for a short period of time, but then you fall back in your patterns. But if you find a way to eat that you enjoy eating, you can stick with it long term. Yeah, and I, I like the things you said, long term, a lifestyle versus diet, because I feel like I'm or I guess maybe our country, we're up in, to our eyeballs in diets and diet schemes, oh, yeah. you know, <laughs> It's crazy. I mean, it's like, you know, some, I don't know the statistics, you, you know, maybe can look them up and put them in there, but it's like something by the, by the time most people are 13, they've tried a diet or two. And, you know, it's, it's a multi, multi billion dollar industry. And it's one of those things you just kind of, you know, you follow the money and it's just, you know, they all the diets, you know, they contradict themselves. And like one says, eat this and the other says, don't eat that. And they're all backed by science and doctors. So it makes it super confusing for the average person to figure out, Hey, what the hell am I supposed to eat here? Because, you know, I, I watch this channel, it says this, and I watch another channel and it says that. So that's why I think it comes down to finding something that works for you personally and in tracking it, making sure that it's actually working for you in terms of, you know, the results that you're looking for. Yeah, one of my big pet peeves, and I think I've posted on this on Instagram and, and talked about it one time on a podcast, but one of my big, big pet peeves is like these um, these crazy diets that want you to buy in and buy this shake or whatever and then they promise this this whatever drink is going to solve all your problems and that's all you have to do <laughs> yeah. right and like that stuff driving yeah. me crazy yeah it's, that's a shame so besides diet what are some of the common reasons we fail when we when we have a goal uh like fat loss what are some of the common failures you see yeah, I think a, a first step or something we see pretty frequently is is lack of clarity in terms of what people's um, goal really is. So it's like, sure, I, I want to lose weight, and it's great. Like, you know, like everybody wants to lose great lose weight. You know, hey, here's a pound loss. But like, what is what is it that you really want? Like, what's the specific goal? Get really specific with it, and then attach a timeline to it. And then lastly, attracts attack some kind of accountability and in tracking. So if you want to lose 20 pounds. Say, okay, great. My goal is to lose 20 pounds over the next, you know, six to eight weeks. And then you can re reverse engineer it. So if that's the case, how many pounds each week do I need to lose? And if that's the case, how frequently do I need to exercise during the week? And now you can really lay out a game plan for yourself, you know, a roadmap, if you will, to get to your ultimate goal. And what I always say also is that, you know, if your goal is to lose 20 pounds, overshoot your goal, make it 25. Because, you know, naturally as humans, once we get close to something, we tend to kind of slow down a little bit. There's some of us, and these are the folks that are usually overachievers, is when they hit that yellow light, you knows what I ask clients all the time. Hey, when you're, when you're driving and you come to a yellow light, do you slow down? Or do you drive through the intersection? Mm -hmm. And so that's ultimately kind of what people's goals are, that yellow light. And sometimes they'll stop and that red light will come and, they'll, and as they're staying and they're not moving forward, they're moving further from their goal versus pushing right through. So if your goal is on the other side of that yellow light, the other side of that intersection, and you fall a little bit short, you're still reaching your goal. And so some of the things you said towards the end reminded me of, of a plateau. So what mm -hmm. if where you got a good diet and we're working hard or whatever, but we're stuck on a plateau, whether that's strength 
or a, a fat loss we can't get, you know, under a certain percentage, whatever we want? Like what are some good, I guess, plateau busting techniques? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's, and it's, it's for the first thing you need to do once you recognize that you've reached a plateau is kind of, you know, for a lot of people, it's a negative thing, but I will, to reframe it is like, Hey, I've made some progress. I've pushed myself. I've gotten to a goal where I'm at. Sure. I'm not all the way there, but I'm on the right track. So recognize it as, you know, this is a sign that you're heading in the right direction. And it's also a sign that the body says, you know, the body just wants to get back to what it's normally been doing. So it will start to push back a little bit. And that is also a good sign. So then you need to look at, you need to either dive a little bit deeper into your nutrition, say, you know, I've been making progress thus far on how I've been eating. Can I make some adjustments? Can I tighten it up a little bit? And then the other, the other place to focus could be the workouts. So if you've been working out, you know, 30 minutes, can you add a little bit extra time or can you keep the same amount of time and just add a little bit more intensity? Are there some new exercises you can integrate into your workout routine? Is it maybe time to up the weights? If you've been, you know, doing your bicep curls with the 25s, is it time to look at the 30s and, and, and push your body a little bit further with the weight of the, ex or weight of the exercises? So those are all different kind of uh, intangibles that we would look at to make some adjustments. In terms of our pillar number three, I'll bounce back to mindset. So what what are some mindset hacks or tips you have for someone to kind of really get in gear on the correct mindset to reach their goal? Yeah, I think it, I think it comes back to um, this question that we need to ask ourselves almost for anything, really. It's why. And, and once we ask that, our, ourselves that question why, it's asking it three to four to five to six more times to really peel down to get to that compelling reason that's really driving us. Because when we can uncover that, that's the true source of our motivation. That's the true source of our inspiration. So if we use, you know, fat loss as an example, um, you know, just about everybody would say they have a few pounds to lose or they want to lose a little bit of fat. And we ask them why. And they say, you know, I, I just want to get in better shape or maybe I just want to look better. And that's kind of a surface reason. And that will only last so long. That might last the first week or maybe two weeks. But, you know, when the alarm's going off at 5 in the morning or 4.55 in the morning or you're tired and you had a long day at work or you're not feeling well or you got stuck in traffic or any of these other million excuses that are out there, that reason alone is not going to drive you to do it. But if you ask yourself, well, well why do I want to lose fat? And if the answer is because, you know, I'm – my doctor said that, you know, hey, it – we're, you're getting a little bit close to diabetes here and we might need to get you on some prescription medication. So avoiding prescription medication is a pretty significant reason. Or maybe it's, I'm just, I don't have enough energy to keep up with the kids in the backyard anymore. And that's a pretty significant reason. Like, wow, you can't, you want to play with your kids and you don't have enough energy to do it anymore. Or maybe it's, you're a little bit older and you're, you're thinking about the grandkids and you'd love to be around to see the grandkids and heart disease is a killer. And, you know, all these different things, that, these diseases that are all right around the corner or if we're not doing our best to stay healthy, um, these can be pretty strong deterrents as well. So that, that's what I would recommend is that the first thing is to dive into your compelling reason why you want to be, um, you know, whatever your goal might be, whether it's losing weight, burning fat, gaining muscle, whatever it is. Okay, perfect. I saw a video of you being really disrespectful to a treadmill. <laughs> <laughs> and then things even got abusive and you hit the treadmill yeah. with a sledgehammer. And I so did. I... Yeah. Um, I'd love to hear, you know, your thoughts on, on, I guess, treadmills and kind of that slow pace cardio grind. Yeah. So here's the thing. It's like there's there's specific pieces of, of uh, you know, fitness equipment out there that are probably suited for just about everybody. But for the folks that I'm working with and most people, you know, 70 plus percent people in America who are obese or, over, or obese or overweight is they they need to move their body and they need to move all of their body. You know, walking on a treadmill, jogging on a treadmill. Not only is it just so damn boring, mm -hmm. but it's not doing anything for you. You know what I mean? It's just like walking around and, and it's like I don't I can't tell you how many times I've heard people tell me, you know, when I ask them what's their exercise routine, I say, Oh, I walk the dog. But that's not exercise. That's just normal life. That's normal moving around and that's why you are in that in your current situation, right? So, you know, typically the 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 treadmill is going to overestimate how many calories you burned. So now you're going to be able to now you're going to go home and overestimate how many how much food you should be able to eat. And it's it's just not it's not an honest um, you know it's not being honest with you in terms of the progress that you're making. So I would much rather have somebody instead of going 20 minutes jogging on the treadmill, literally going nowhere, you know, do 30 seconds of squat with an overhead press 
or, you know, a couple of, you know, sprints or close to sprints as you could do with some rest in between. And, and you could do the, that workout and half the time you spend on the treadmill and improve your cardio, improve your metabolism, burn more calories, burn more stored body fat and get closer to your goals than being on the treadmill. Got me all riled up, man. I know. I love it. Well, I figured if you hit it with a sledgehammer, <laughs> you felt pretty good about it. But, yeah. um, but I totally I, I agree 100%. I haven't been on a treadmill in a really long time. I'll uh, after my workouts, I'll stop by a football field and sprint, or I'll play basketball, and that's like Absolutely. so much better than a waste of a time spending thirty minutes meandering on a treadmill. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And it's like you, you know, cardio is an important element. And find something you enjoy doing, like you mentioned, playing basketball, um, doing some sprints on the on the track. And I love to run. This is coming from a guy that you know, like I run thirty miles a week. But I, I, and the part of that enjoyment for me is getting out and running around on the trails and running around and seeing the city and, and, you know, moving around as well instead of being in one spot again. So our, my biggest social media spot is, or uh, account is on Instagram. That's where I'm most active. And yeah. I kind of want to talk and see, pick your brain on body image on Instagram. So you and me are both healthy guys that look fine, you know, look good. But, like, compared to Instagram world, you know, we don't look all that great. And, you know, on, <laughs> on Instagram world, there's these bodies that are totally unobtainable. Insta models. Yeah, Insta models. We just, you know, naturally you just can't do it. Like, do you think that for your average person that doesn't really know that uh, there's maybe drugs involved, it's just not natural, do you think that, it, that, like, beats them down a little bit and keeps them from starting a program because they think they're so far away from that Insta supermodel? Yeah, I could see that. You know, I could see, um, you know, I think I think if we ask them, their argument might be, hey, I want to inspire somebody. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I think I, I lean towards the other side that, um, you know, that it's it's one of those things that it's like, hey, I, I can never get there. That's so far from where I am. Mm -hmm. And what what's the point of getting started? Mm -hmm. um, and, and so, yeah, so I, you know, and I just, you know, I, I wonder why, you know, where those posts are coming from for them. It's like, they might have their body, you know, in tip top shape, but it seems like they, they might need to do some emotional growth on their own personally for, you know what I mean? Cause generally it's like where we, where we put, you know, so much of our effort is kind of like the, the issue that we're trying to address. So I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I, I see your point. I see your point that, you know, that if you're so far away from something, it can, it can feel pretty overwhelming and kind of make, give you that feeling of why even, why even start. Well, cool. So we've talked about Ian Fitness kind of in the present. I'd like to go back in our DeLorean time machine and talk mm -hmm. about Ian, Ian Fitness. Uh, the flux capacitor. Yeah, the flux capacitor. We'll get it fixed um, <laughs> and uh, and see how this journey started. You know, were you an accountant before this started or what? You know, kind oh, of what's man. the story? <laughs> the furthest thing from an accountant. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, you know um, – I'll start with just as I finished up college, I was a, a soccer player in college and had grown up. My biggest dream was to play professional soccer. So that was kind of where all my efforts and, and, and dedication went growing up and, and through school. And so once I finished school, I went over to Germany and played briefly over there and came back and kind of bounced around the U.S. playing. And I was always like the last guy to make the team, but the happiest guy on the squad, right? <laughs> last guy, the end of, guy at the end of the bench, but the biggest smile on his face. Like I loved practice. I loved all of it. Everybody's like, who is this guy? What is he doing here? But so I did that for a few years. And, and the whole time I was doing that, from the time I was playing soccer, I was, you know, 11, 12 years old, I was always coaching. Mm -hmm. So I was always coaching kids. And then as I got better, you know, I was coaching more individual with speed and agility development, individual skill. And unbeknownst to me, I was kind of, you know, stacking these 10,000 hours, if you will, in terms of how to coach and how to develop people and how to take a person from a certain, certain skill level to, a, to an advanced skill level and recognizing how people need different levels of motivation and what inspires people. And so as my career kind of wound down, I found myself in San Diego where I was playing a little bit, I was coaching, and I also got a job at a local gym, more just so for the free membership, right? Mm -hmm. And as I was selling memberships there, I really enjoyed it, and I, and I was getting people set up to come into the gym because I loved fitness, and I loved being in shape, and I said, this is awesome. I'm helping all these people. But the reality is once I signed a lot of these people up, I never saw them again, 
you know, Mm -hmm. and it's about, I think the statistic is 84% of people who have a gym membership never go. So while I I, I was feeling excited and, and, and fulfilled that I was helping people get started towards their fitness journey, the reality was I I wasn't, and I I wasn't helping them at all. And so there's this real disconnect I felt inside. And at the same time, as I, as I realized that, you know, I wasn't going to go to the next city to play the following you know, season Mm -hmm. that it was actually an opportunity for me to do something a little bit different because it always been about sacrifice and no off season. I was always training. I was always preparing. So I said, you know what, maybe it's time to go fulfill some other dreams. And I'd always had a, you know, desire to go to Machu Picchu. I always had this strong, strong kind of magnetic urge. So I said, you know what, it's time to do something different. I sold everything I had, quit my job and I bought a one way ticket to Peru. And my goal was to travel South America, Central America, uh, you know, overland via bus and, and finding rides with people all the way back up to San Diego. And what ended up happening is I made it, you know, through South America and most of Central America, and I got invited to go play soccer again in the Middle East for a little bit. So I headed over to Israel to play there, <laughs> bounced around traveling the Middle East for a little bit. And then at that point, it had been such a long time since I'd worked and I had spent such a long time spending money, I had no money left. So <laughs> time to head back to Seattle, back to my roots where my folks were, to figure what the hell I wanted to do. I didn't know. So once I got back in Seattle, I, you know, I just, you know, caught up with friends and family for a while and, and really fought going back to the gym because it felt like, you know, it felt like going back to an ex-girlfriend. It felt like I had tried that and it didn't work. I I wanted to help people. It wasn't the answer, but I ended up um, taking a job at a local gym because the, the offer was to be an independent personal trainer as well as membership. So I figured, you know, maybe if I can help people get started in the membership, I can at least do a free training session for them and, and maybe get them, get them hooked and so that they'll actually get some results. And, you know, one of the main reasons I actually took the job was because I could walk there from my friend's house who I was sleeping on his couch because um, I didn't have a car. <laughs> so I figured, you know, like I'll do this for a little while and then, you know, then as I get some money and get a car, I can get a different job. But fortunately, uh, that's not the case. And, and after my first client, she, she got on board with, board with training and there was a dramatic transformation, not just physically, but, you know, emotionally and her confidence and her comfort level. And I just fell in love with it. I got addicted to to that transformation that we're able to help people um, through the fitness side. And so, you know, I'll, I'll fast forward a little bit over the last, you know, nine years, um, I was able to, you know, build up clients because I was doing membership. And then the, that gym had a second location. So I started doing the same thing at the other location and, and hired somebody to help me out. And then I would had enough people kind of quit and, and move across town and say, hey, if you had a location over here, I'd totally keep going. And I said, you know what, maybe I should have a location over there. Yeah. So that's when I, I, you know, I opened my first location and then the second. And then some point along the line, you know, we'd, we'd grown out of those two gyms. So I left there and opened new locations. And now, you know, we're, we're opening a, almost a couple of locations a year at this point. Wow, that's really exciting. And yeah. So are it's been, it's are all right. nine of them – uh, yours or the franchise? I'm just curious. Well, they're all, they're all mine. Yeah. It's, um, you know, something I've thought about, but it, at this point I, I, you know, I just, because we're, we're all kind of in the greater Seattle area. I just, I feel like I could, um, I just, you know, I'm nervous about the franchising aspect in terms of maintaining the integrity of the brand and of what we're doing, because it's such a, you know, it's such an important part of our success is the culture and community and kind of customer service and, and results oriented process that we have at our locations. And I just want to make sure that I, that I have my hands in that for the time being. Yeah. I imagine at some level you'd lose some control and couldn't quite guarantee, you know, that you're were well represented. Well, that's great, man. Congratulations on all that success. And that's a wild story. <laughs> that's yeah. <pretty> cool. <laughs> yeah. It's, it was, it, it was funny. It was, you know, it was funny when I was traveling around, people would ask me, you know, like, Hey, what do you do? You know, and I would say, I have no idea. You know, or the, like, I don't do This is it. And they have say, well, ideas? Get back to Seattle? And I, was like, I don't know. Something, hopefully something special. And, um, and, and so, yeah, so here we are. I couldn't have dreamed anything better. That's pretty cool. So uh, I happen to know from one of our earlier conversations that you were at a Tony Robbins event earlier this week, I think. Yeah, man. I just, I just got back uh, Sunday night. Uh, I was at Unleash the Power Within in, um, in New Jersey. So how how was that, dude? It was unbelievable. It was it was really really cool. You know, I'd, I've listened to a lot of Tony Robbins and watched a lot of his stuff, his videos on YouTube and stuff. But just being there, I mean, there was fourteen thousand people there, people from seventy two different countries, wow. and just the energy in the room and and which you know, 
as as a I've done some presenting when the energy is in the room it really just kind of transfers to the speaker as well and like you could tell he was feeling it and it was just I mean you know not only was the content amazing but just kind of the experience of it was was great I you know I, life will never be the same you know it was it was that significant that's really cool so obviously you know going to an event uh, you know, getting your plane ticket out there, everything. That's an example of you investing in yourself, and that's something I'm trying to do more of. I'm trying to read more, all that. Like, what mm-hmm. point did you start maybe investing more in yourself and kind of uh, maybe flip the switch that like, hey, going to an event like this is worth it? Like, did something happen, or how did that how did that change? Yeah, I would say you know maybe four or five years ago, I started to go into this fitness business summit. Because, you know, as much as I, I had natural ability in terms of, like I mentioned, I was kind of naturally accruing all these these hours of experience, yeah. I didn't have a whole lot of experience on the business side, right? So um, this, you know, I knew that I needed to get some outside help with it. And I, I was, I've always been a big reader. I've always enjoyed reading. So it wasn't hard for me to read books in terms of things that would progress me forward. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the, the whole concept with getting help from a mentor or from coaching or masterminds is... Not that this information is, you know, unattainable elsewhere, but it's if you can if you can read a book of somebody's life that might take you three, four, five, six hours that this person lived for 30, 40 or 50 years, like they're taking all their knowledge and you can have it in six hours. You know, it's pretty it was pretty powerful for me. So I'd read all these books and I'm like, man, I like I wonder what more this person has to offer. And so then I would I would seek them out and see if there's an opportunity to, you know, find, um, you know, like re- listen to an audio book. Or, you know, then start going to live events. And I, I heard, um, you know, not a few years ago that a saying something along the lines of, you know, your personal income will never exceed your personal growth. And that really stuck with me. And I really, I really believe that um, this, because I've seen it on the fitness side, that I've seen people, you know, their fitness, um, their individual fitness will never exceed, you know, like how they feel about themselves. If somebody has really low self-esteem and really low confidence, they're always going to self-sabotage. And so it's kind of the same principle for me as a business owner um, and just personally is I really want to grow and get to the next level, um, you know, financially and impact and all those things. And I know that for me to get there, I also need to develop personally, whether it be, you know, a Tony Robbins event or, you know, joining a mastermind or going to different, you know, um, fitness summits and stuff that are, that are frequently all around the U S. So yeah, it's, it's, and it's, it's really, you know, every time I go, um, you know, I think one of the things that uh, if I can say that I've been successful has allowed me to be successful is that I, I take action on items. Mm -hmm. You know, we all have, you know, knowledge is out there and, you know, the old saying was knowledge is power. And I don't think that's true. I think, you know, action is power. So it's, it's put, you know, you can go to all these things, but you also have to make sure that you're, you're putting that information and you're putting that knowledge into play for it to really be relevant. Yeah, I love that you mentioned masterminds and your summit and all these things because it's funny. I've only learned about these, I would say, type of things for the last maybe year. You know, I've kind of yep. been I've been an uh, engineer in the corporate world, and you just don't really think about that stuff. You just work your job and whatever. And uh, yep. I think it started with podcasts, and then I started reading. I learned about masterminds and all this stuff. And and um, there's this whole world of personal development and like investing in yourself that I don't think a lot of people are even um, aware of because I wasn't, you know, really. Because yeah. You just work your job and make your money and move on, you know, make your check and whatever. Right. But it's really important and and uh, that's that's really neat. You were you were at Tony Robbins' event. Yeah, yeah. I totally I totally recommend going to anybody who has an opportunity. It's it's a, a really cool experience. Learn a lot about yourself. Learn a lot about you know just you know his his kind of you know you I mean I, the whole thing was like forty hours. You know, we'd start at eight thirty in the morning go till one at night and with maybe two breaks, you know, it's crazy, but there's so much energy and there's so much going on. You don't even really realize that it's amazing how fast it goes. But, you know, the idea really is that you, you know, at, at the end of the day, you're in control of your emotions. And when you put yourself in a positive, you know, positive state or a positive emotion, then, you know, you can, that's where you can accomplish things. And that's ultimately under your control is one of his big messages. Wow. Well, Ian, I want to thank you so much for being on. And I uh, had a blast. We talked about your business and fat loss tips, exercise tips, diet or nutrition tips, and yeah. uh, and everything. So so thanks so much. Absolutely, man. It's been it's been a real honor. I really appreciate you uh, taking the time to have me on the show. Thank you very much. All right, man. Well, good luck and uh, and go help some people uh, reach their goals today. We're on it. Thank you again. All right, guys. That's a wrap with Ian Weinberg. As you can tell, Ian's a really great guy. 
And even on his website, you can see it. I'm on his website, ianfitness.com right now. And you go through and you can see videos and articles and whatever. The thing is, is it's all just offering good advice. There's a free course here with a meal plan and home workout. And you can really just tell that Ian's passionate about this and he's really just trying to help. You've probably been to the kind of websites that are all like a big funnel and just to get you to a sales page or something like that. And, and you know, Ian's just got a lot of great content on here and, and a lot of cool videos uh, like the smashing treadmill. I'll go ahead and spoil it and say he also smashes a scale, uh, some kind of Starbucks drink called the unicorn. Wait, he throws that one down. And then, oh, he smashes an alarm clock. <laughs> So, Ian, if you're listening to this, keep on hitting things with hammers because I really love it. <laughs> so, if you're in the Seattle area, you definitely need to check Ian out. If you're not, check out his website and use some of his resources and videos. Well, all right, guys. I guess we're just going to have to see you next time. Take care. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Fatherhood Fitness Finance Podcast. You can find us at fatherhoodfitnessfinance.com.